Aries Armor in San Diego, California. If you don't know, they are a tactical manufacturer. They do tactical nylon, they do 80% lower receivers, and as you're going to see in this video, they do knives. And this is going to be talking about high value, a four for one knife review and the project. Unless things have changed, I think Aries Armor is the exclusive distributor for Anza Knives. I may have missed it. And when I went down there doing that other story, I saw these knives in the case and I was immediately interested. If you saw that video, I said as much. I was like, I want to review these. These are cool blades. Now, at this point in the project, the TMP Knife Show, I can pretty much get a hold of any knife I want, review any knife I want, buy any knife I want. I still gravitate towards high value knives. I still gravitate towards getting more for your money. And that's why I love Anza. And that it's kind of tied to Aries Armor, for me, kind of makes it a little more appealing. I like that. It's a company with personality. I'm talking Aries. I don't know Charlie Davis and company of Anza, but if they're using Aries to distribute their knives, I think you can buy direct from them as well. I'm pretty sure you can. Mm, I kind of like that too. It's cool. I like supporting companies like that. And I really like supporting companies that got their pricing structure squared away. Some don't. And I've covered some knives here on the table, which in my opinion are not squared away price-wise. They are in line with what the other competition is doing, but they're outlandish. And I would not spend my money on them. Maybe you would. We all have different things we spend our money on. But these knives are cool. And they're very capable, and they will not break the bank. Let's start there, why don't we? Why don't we start with value? There's four knives on the table. I'll take them out of the sheaths right now. First up, say hello to the 15.6 ounce Pig Slayer. I did test that one. Not a huge amount, but some. I went up in the mountains and thumped on it. And I'll show you some footage here or there. I don't know how good it is. <laughs> I, just, I just set up a, a tripod, man, because I want to get the mountains in the background. I, like, I want to get those mountains. Those are cool. So I'm like hammering away. Tripod kit's falling. Whatever, I just, I don't know. I've done this so long, that sometimes you just get to where yawn, you just get tired of it. It's just like, yeah, it just doesn't matter. The guys don't care if they have inset footage or not. <laughs> this one here is called the Dune Field. It's the same weight as this one, 15.6. It's also like the Anza Joe Field model, I believe. This is the 9-ounce swap model. Very cool. I will show them closer on camera here in just a sec. Hang tight. And this is, I think some team here is really going to love this one. The 4.4 ounce backup model. We'll start there. Okay, philosophy of use is, as you can imagine, going to be a little bit different for each blade. This is not too heavy. 4.4 ounces, $68. I write it down so I don't get confused, by the way. The knives like that. That's a cool way to label stuff, by the way. I use like colored electrical tape and I just write pretty much everything now because it doesn't wear off a little side note not worth much we'll talk about the sheets here in a second what would this be used for probably what the name implies as a backup weapon kind of I think more likely thankfully is an EDC knife for that I think it's pretty squared away hey nothing would you carry that as an EDC blade mm, what do you think TMP knife guy. Mm, you're right, I would not. It's just too big for me, too chunky. I, it's just not my thing. But a lot of people would. And I don't fault them at all for it. A lot of dudes do. But a lot of dudes aren't wearing what I'm wearing. <laughs> Freaking fanny pack. <laughs> I know, I'm never going to change, so deal with it. I don't care. I love it. It's practical, man. I'm way more prepared than most dudes, that's for dang sure. Let's see my EDC today, by way of reference. I usually do this. Is this little thing. The Rat 2. That's an easy blade for me, more capable, I just like it. Folder, I don't have to have it stabbing into my side as I'm carrying it. I do fix blades once in a while. I'm talking for EDC purposes, I will. And the nice thing about the backup is it's very short overall length. As you can see, great grip, no jimping, a lot of guys won't care. For a knife this small, it won't matter. You're going to see some great ergos on this knife too, on all these knives, they're good. How about this one, the SWAT knife? Well, if you want a product to sell <laughs> in the tactical community, you give it a tactical name, right? Give it a tactical color. Generally, it will do better. Like, if you were to name this knife, uh, what, 
the frog skinner would it do as good well with some communities it might but generally not so it's called the SWAT I like that name by the way I think it's a great field knife would it be my number one pick uh, I don't know you know it's nine ounces Generally for a field knife, I'm talking a man portable system like backpacking. No, I'm going to go with something like a SOG Field Pup. Five ounces. SOG Aura. Something like that. Bigger camp knife. I've reviewed a lot of great camp knives on this channel. SOG Northwest Ranger. I don't know why I'm gravitating to SOG. There's a lot of good ones. You know, Spyderco makes some. Some other non-stainless blades I review. This is actually a good all-arounder. It might be your favorite one. Sub hilt design, it's got great indentations. There's those great ergos again. It locks in the hand, no jumping. But I'm not so sure you need it with how the handle's designed. And the blade is just about right. These are all hollow ground. No FFG here, hollow ground. And we'll talk about the steel here in a second. I love this one. I think it's cool. It's not it's fast in hand. The balance on all of these is really good. And they seem fast in hand. How about this one? Dune Field. This is going to be bigger. 15.6, I'm uh, uh, sorry, 15.6 ounces again. Same weight as this because it's a thicker file. Slightly, if I'm seeing that right. I could be wrong. Hollow ground. And I just love the grinding on these. I just do. No, it's not about FFG all the time. I love a lot of hollow ground blades. I like the looks of it. I like that he kept the file right here so we know where the steel came from it's obvious right I love this one also a, a shallower sub hilt design and I don't know if that's right the right terminology for it you know just a deep finger choil right there to lock it in I do wish they had jumping there I said it I still do decent tip on this one too unsharpened swedge coming up there and on all these knives the hand grinding job is pretty good I wouldn't say it's perfection. On one of them, it was a little bit asymmetric. I don't know if it's on the SWAT. I'll just show you up close so you can determine for yourself. How's that? But razor sharp. Nice big old relief edge. Kind of blued. The steel's blued. It's not tie knife for sure. These will rust. You know that. And then the thumped on pig slayer. Philosophy of use, since we are kind of talking about that. Camp knife, tactical blade, tactical blade, camp knife, uh, pig slayer for sure. I had a long discussion on a recent review about that. I'm not going to go into it again, but that's what it's designed for. You know, by name alone, stabbing pigs. Gosh, that's brutal. Brutal. There's dudes that do it. There's your relief edge on it. After thumping it, edge retention on this, I would say it's pretty excellent, by the way. Also an unsharpened swedge on here. Some file work here, which lends some aesthetics. Very cool. This The bounce on this is going to be a little bit off because you've got the handle way back here, and you got a big old blade way up here. Right? These, the bounce on these, superb. How about the steel? Well, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It's a file. So Anza has been making knives out of files for a long time. But not just a regular file. And if you're not familiar with it, you may go, well, files are really brittle. Yes, they're hard, but they're going to crack. Uh, you are correct if you were saying that. However, these files are tempered, drawn down. So the metal's transformed. Retaining hardness, introducing toughness. Speaking from experience. Didn't break. Thumped on it. Not super hard. Not in sub-zero conditions. If anybody can break a knife, it's me inadvertently I'm pretty good at it but I didn't break this one but again I didn't test it forever either but from what I saw thumping on it banging on it prying with it tip did not break <coughs> it did bend a little bit the whole knife bit blade did I mean I think I'm showing you that I mean I'm really torquing on the blade saying because eh, I know where the origin is it's a file I want to see if they got the the drawdown right I know there's a lot of evidence out there that Anza does and has done it well, but I kind of got to find out for myself. Since uh, the brand's new to me. I didn't break it, and nor did it not return to true. After I was done. I was impressed. Pretty. It's a file, 
but dang man it's tough and it holds an edge how about the handles look at the handle how it's executed this is another thing that attracted the blades to me at Aries armor is that there's no sharp edges on these whereas you'll pick up heck any number of blades the Ranger series comes to mind and they got good handles but they're usually too short and there's a sharp edge in there somewhere which has turned me off the entire line I don't like it for a working knife why would you have sharp edges on it for a fight knife why would you have sharp edges on it unless it's like on a striking pommel of which all of these knives could function for attach your lanyard there by the way love the you know it's canvas micarta properly executed you can't take them off which is, might be a disadvantage you're probably epoxied on I don't see any blind rivets in there so probably epoxied on obviously full tang designs great execution on the handles though they're comfortable and they look great how about the she's standard leather so here's the one from the dune field cleverly labeled for your reference awesome they remind me of the buck knives leather she's they're serviceable pouch she's can't drain good stitching made in the u.s probably they're good if you want to amp it up go to our friends at red hill kydex have them make you a cool sheath no they're not free nothing really good in life is free well some things love the love of a good puppy dog perhaps <laughs> or after you rescued it a love from a good cat right you saved your neighbor's cat that cat should pay you back no it just goes bolting off what's with cats they are so ungra ungrateful <laughs> oh my gosh it's a swat there's your sheath there dude though there's your prices too while i read it those pig slayers 176 swat knife that one right there 120 the dune is 148 we already talked about the backup these prices by the way strike me as pretty awesome for the quality you're getting so this is an american-made knife it goes through a tempering process by american bladesmith yeah they come from fly files but some dudes putting this knife together there's a lot of knives in this country that are put together equally as well and they're charged about five times as much they're charging about five times as much look at cu custom semi customs so here this pix layer is 176 if it was from a custom maker i don't know 800 and the quality any different Cut, cutting performance not so much you know you might have some handle differences these are working knives though might collect them because who knows you know one day the model will be discontinued I and by the way these are not the only knives that anza makes i'll flash up some screenshots of some others they make but i'm thinking these are some of the best and so dimitri at aries armor has picked what he thinks the tactical community will like the best and i think he's right you know by the way these two are good soldier knives a little bit on the heavy side but still good soldier blades if you know what that means that means something you strap to your lbe you use for everything open up mres you know digging in the ground if you absolutely had to hopefully use something else killing a bad guy if you have to competitive options i don't have any on the table <laughs> i've gone through so many carbon steel knives and that's kind of what we're talking about is rustable carbon steel knives you know these are made out of files you know great steel hard steel it will rust which is kind of a disadvantage if you pair it with a, the leather sheath even this one after i got done with it i oiled it up immediately and it was dry that day had it been raining you know it's probably gonna have some rust spots on it that will be there forever like i've shown you on the table before on the review table tons of competitive options dig in my playlist fixed blade playlist they're accessible from the nut and fancy project channel page you'll see quality is phenomenal from what i'm seeing like i didn't know if i showed you that exact one where the grind maybe just a little bit off but the edges come out really nice easy enough to resharpen for the hardness of the steel but i really want to emphasize the toughness of the steel too from my own testing it's tough i like it two kinds of cool actually two kinds of cool so it's capable and roll the brief philosophies of use we talked about i didn't really cover hunting i think there's better blade designs for hunting are these the actual blade shapes you want and to make some other ones that you might want to look at and some other cool blades they make like their 16-3 buoy knife dang that's cool 300 dollars i think that one is has an antler handle so they do different handle treatments it's not just micarta 
They got the JV5 Tanto. That's a cool blade. I don't know if Aries carries that one, but I saw it on the Ann's website. That's about $185. Very cool. Collectible? Yeah. I mean, have you ever heard of, a lot of you guys, have you even heard of Ann's and I's before I went down to San Diego? It's kind of a, you know, under the radar company. Maybe not so much. Do we talked about it here? Maybe. Just maybe. Highly recommended. These are great knives. Very capable. The value is off the charts. I like supporting the company that puts them together, and I like supporting Aries Armor. Out.